This video contains spoiler alerts on the campaign, so if you don't want to see it, please go somewhere else. Otherwise, I'm going to be spoiling the campaign and even the gameplay of Halo Infinite. Previously on Ninja Hawk. After the global failure known as Halo 5, how could they exactly take the franchise for Halo? Well, I know how Free for Free did it by releasing a game six years later, which is pathetic. Today, we're going to be looking at the multiplayer side because no way am I buying the bloody campaign. And, and now, now for his greatest, greatest nightmare. nightmare. Good day. Oh, shit. Oh, my back. That hurt. Oh, fudge cakes. Oh, what the hell? Who the heck gave me this? Oh, well. Guess I gotta play the campaign after all. Oh, crap. Here's something before even getting close to the campaign. You can't play split screen campaign. Why? That is absolutely stupid and unacceptable. They clearly didn't learn from Halo 5. Starting off at the very first cutscene, not gonna lie, I really enjoyed how Master Chief gets defeated by Atriox, which is a fan favorite character from Halo Wars 2. Anyway, Master Chief gets defeated and so does the UNSC. I like this, though I do wish the fighting could have gone for at least a minute or two, but that's my opinion. As we continue on through the campaign after meeting the Russian dude who I clearly forget about who his name is all along, we come across a new character called the Weapon. She's a ripoff of Cortana and all around worse. This literally describes how much I trust the character. How can you trust me? I don't. My opinion, this character is definitely in the top 10 worst ripoff characters of all time list. Once I arrived on Zeta Halo and captured the first base that you do at the very beginning, I thought, damn, this is going to be pretty cool, an open world area. This is going to be awesome. Played for a while, I was not a fan of it at all, and I'm not trying to hate on the idea, I just don't think that this belongs in Halo. Maybe if it was a different game other than Halo, something that's new, or maybe even an open world game, I could see this being a blast, but because it's Halo, I would have expected level after level, but oh well, if I'm not a fan of that, maybe the campaign would be good. Sadly, the campaign, I hated it. From the cutscenes to just everything, I just, just all around hated it, and... I had the worst time ever. Oh yeah, by the way, the difficulty is far too easy and I played it on normal difficulty, which that is pathetic. I will get comments like, but Ninja Hawk normal difficulty is supposed to have no challenge at all and to that I say BS. The original trilogy handles it perfectly. There's a challenge somewhere and I still learn from something every single time I play any of the difficulties period, even if I've mastered all of them. Now, doesn't that say something? Infinite, what did I learn? Nothing. Nothing at all. And also the story in the originals were amazing, but Infinite I already just said was crap. Anyway, so what about the side missions in the open world level? Um, They're pretty boring and they don't fit in Halo. In fact, none of the areas look like a Halo area. They look like they belong in something like Far Cry. The controls are terrible. They are absolutely stiff, janky, and awkward compared to the originals where they're nice and smooth. So now, what about the open world color to the levels? Because yes, we're actually going to compare color. It easily has to be the most bland game I've ever played. Am I looking at a Nintendo 64 game or a 2021 title? Because this looks absolutely disgusting and everything looks like they come out of piss filters all over the place with blocky textures. Seriously? For six years, this is the best you could come up with? Absolutely F+. 
I may have not come across many bland lightings ever before in gaming, but this is easily the worst I've ever seen. None of these bland color issues were in the originals. On to my favorite part, bugs and glitches. There are so many in the game. Whatever you need, sir. You sure you don't want to hang on to this one, sir? Ah, oh, man, you're sticking me with this? I know my way around one of these. Oops. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this. Careful! Don't shoot friendlies! Me, sir. Hey, cut the crap. You shouldn't have. Seriously. Sure thing, Chief. What I showed you was only just 1% of the entire experience because, man, there were so many bugs, including that audio one where it was like breaking up a bit. And the Marines, man. Gee, I was holding it so many times, I couldn't tell you how much that was frustrating. Whoever thought the Marines should be immune to everything you shoot at them clearly didn't know what made Halo what it is. The voice acting is terrible in this game. The worst one easily being the Jackals, because why did they think it was a good idea to have a human voice on it? In fact, I could sound exactly like the Jackals. No kidding at all. I literally did it in my spare time. I mean, it's bad, yes, though at least it's not right to hell bad where everyone sounds like they have problems. Now on to my two favorite parts of the video, the vehicles and the equipment. Let's start off with the vehicles and let's go with my second favorite vehicle of all time, the Scorpion. What the hell happened to the Scorpion? It is impossible to use, and I swear nobody tested this vehicle out. How does it compare in comparison to free and my favorite version of Scorpion, Halo Reach? Doors, Spark will be happy to pry them open. I will certainly try my best. Though I am unfamiliar with this facility. All right then, you heard the lady.
and it's not the only vehicle to have these problems. Nope, literally everything feels worse than the originals, but I'm going to show you one more, which is the Warthog. Oh boy, you've got to see this. And by the way, the Razorback controls very similar, except for with worse controls. You know what, I'm going to show you one last one instead, just those two, and this is going to be a flying vehicle, the Banshee, a classic vehicle, but unlike the originals, which is pretty good against boss enemies of some sort, here, apparently the Banish are almost immune to everything, because somehow they've learned to survive missiles. Now, let's compare on foot. Absolutely BS. Why not just make on foot sections only if you don't want us to use vehicles to destroy the bosses and plus Shouldn't it be the other way around, which is vehicles do more damage than anything? I mean, that's how it's been through the whole franchise, so that's absolutely crap, and this could have been done a billion better ways. The five equipments from multiplayer return in the campaign, I'm not going to lie, they are way more suited here, and you can even upgrade them, which is really cool. Too bad I only used two of them, and... Even more too bad because these do not fit in Halo. I get they're trying to replace the armor abilities from Reach, which by the way are amazing, but nothing will ever replace it. Sorry, but I'm not a fan of it being in Halo, but I would have preferred it in another video game with an open world sandbox. One of the things I wanted to do was go to one of the mission areas, but I wanted to fly there instead of replay the mission because why do I want to play the mission again just to get a skull? I wish that wasn't a problem at all. Though, um, we're up to the final two parts of the video, by the way. Um, let's go to the weapons. Talking about a great new weapon, the Pulse Carbine. An excellent addition, has a similar design to the Carbine Rifle. Otherwise, it's great, and I would certainly allow that weapon if I was to make a brand new Halo game. Heck yeah, I would certainly add it. It's definitely a great addition. As for the other weapons design and feel, they're definitely not Halo. I mean, do any of these look like they belong in Halo? No, they don't. Thankfully, they don't play terrible, but that's not saying much when the whole point of this game is a Halo game and none of these look like Halo. The shock rifle is literally the best weapon in the game because it does absolutely everything. It's literally a DG2 one officer so chain. It electric chains enemies to death and also it has super long range with the best fire rate ever because it is just that good and 
It's just an all-around great weapon. But the big problem I have with the weapons is I don't want to use anything else outside the battle rifle and the shock rifle because there's refill ammo stations, so everything else feels completely pointless. My final thoughts on the game. The, the game just isn't even a great experience. The campaign was boring. The, the gameplay was stiff and clunky. The glitches, the bugs, the vehicle controls were terrible, and many of the weapons just didn't feel like they belonged in a Halo game with the bad voice acting and just just not a great experience at all. So here's my uh, final rating on, on this. Uh, no, actually, no, not even a rating because I'm not even going to give it a certain number out of 10 because I know that I'm going to give it the worst. So here's how I perfectly describe the game for you. A waste of my time. Not worth six years of waiting and I'm very disappointed that I had to wait so long for a game that I knew I wasn't going to enjoy, but never in my life did I think that I was going to have an even more disappointing time on day one. Absolutely unacceptable. And speaking about Christmas presents, I do not recommend this game for you at all. Though, there is one good game I do recommend if you like 2D shooters, and that is Metroid Dread. A game that came out this year, absolutely worth it, and... Anytime, a lot of fun over this game. Before I wrap up, I want to say two things to you all. First one is tomorrow's video will explain something pretty important about the channel and um, other plans as well too. And the other is uh, this video took a lot of effort for me to do and I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect it to be this, this hard to make this video, but you know what? In the end, in my opinion, I thought it was absolutely worth it. But anyway, that's pretty much it for me. So um, thank you everyone for spending the time to watch this video. Have an excellent holiday, everybody. Yeah.